Well, my topic this time is the Ice Age. Only the Bible can explain it. Provocative title. But I will flush it out for you and see, and you'll understand what I mean by that. You better have some sweaters available, because people tell me when I talk about this subject, they feel cold. <laughs> but don't worry. Uh, when I talk uh, this evening, you can take them off. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, here's those Earth ch Science Challenges. This is just a sample, like I said. That is 16 out of 40 I wrote down. Um, we have hundreds of them, of which the Ice Age is one of those challenges. You know, they challenge us. How can you account for Ice Age in your model? Well, that's what I've tried to work on or explain for 35 years. And here's some of the results of those challenges, like I went through before. It's caused many of the Tao God's word. Yeah, it's caused tens of thousands of atheists, agnostics, millions of Christians to try to fit evolution and deep time into the Bible, enhance the local flood myth, and it's resulted in a mass exodus of the youth. Starting in grade school, they learn about it, and then, then they become more out of touch with church, and that's why the book Already Gone was mentioned, because they're already gone. They're in church, but they're already gone mentally, and it's a and we need to get our youth back, and this is what part this is about. This, so this issue is a very important issue. So let's talk about the Ice Age. What is an Ice Age? Well, it's simply a great increase in snow and ice. Uh, we have 10% of the continental areas are covered by ice now, and you know where they are. During the Ice Age, it was 30%. Most of northern Canada, northern United States, excuse me, most of Canada, the northern United States. Also, I want to make a point that I'm going to come back to at the end. It's the last major geophysical event in Earth history. The last major thing ever since the Ice Age, which is after the flood, it's been generally uh, uniformitarianism, present processes, you know, slow processes like we observe today, uh, that we do observe today. It's been going on since the end of the Ice Age. So it's the last major event. So I'm going to make a point. So what is the challenge of the Ice Age? Well, the evolutionists say, well, each Ice Age takes 100,000 years. A glacial phase is 90,000, interglacial phase is 10,000. And over the last 2.5 million years, there's been about 30 regularly repeating ice ages during the past 2.5 million years. Now, you might have heard there was only four ice ages. How many have heard there was only four ice ages? Okay, have you, or three, yeah, or five sometimes. How many have heard that that is obsolete? Well, it's been obsolete since the 1970s, believe it or not. And it's still taught in, in museums, like the museum at Price, Utah, it has a display showing the four ice ages, but that's been uh, thrown out uh, for, since the 70s. And now they have 30. And why do they have 30? It's not because of the deposits you see on land. It's because they get their ice age, number of ice ages from deep sea cores. And they measure in um, microorganisms what's called the oxygen isotope ratios, which is, they, they believe, proportional to temperature. And I think it generally is, but there's lots of exceptions. So when the, it wiggles this way, it's an ice age. When it wiggles this way, it's an interglacial. So it does this dozens of times going down that core. So to them, that's, that's how they get those 30 ice ages. And here's a typical statement they give. This is from an anti-creationist book by Arthur Strahler, an atheist. Increasing the duration of the Ice Age by a factor of about 10. In other words, they increase the age of Antarctica by a, a factor of 10 is what he's talking about. But doing this, he says, greatly increases the stress upon the creation scientists who must compress the events of 15 million years into 4,000 years of post-flood time. In other words, can we explain the Ice Age and those multiple Ice Ages? And even when Antarctica started to glaciate about 30 million years ago, reached a peak at about 15 million, it's been steady state ever since. That's what he's talking about. Can we explain such things? Well, do you give up? Uh, just believe what they say? You know, no, you, you start examining the data. You know, look at what they're talking about. What, and you know, like I said, what I find out, they have problems too explaining the Ice Age. The Ice Age is not uh, a showcase for their model, as I'll show. And I hold fast to that which is good. I put on my biblical glasses and, and examine the data. So the first thing we need to talk about is, was there an ice age? Maybe we don't have to explain anything if there wasn't one. Well, the way to find out whether there was an ice age is to go look at areas that were glaciated recently, like areas where glaciers have been receding. 
practically all the glaciers in the world have been receding uh, due to global warming. I'll talk about that more this evening. And this is the beautiful Athabasca Glacier in the uh, uh, Canadian Rockies. It's been receding. It was out here in 1890. And you look at what features you have in there. You have rocks of all sizes in, mixed up in a, with, uh, all together with finer uh, ma matrix around it often, like sand or silt or little pebbles around these bigger rocks. And you find these, these ridges right on in the front of it, piled up in front of the glacier. Those are what's called terminal moraines. And along the edges of it, you see these piled up mounds of debris uh, that would be called lateral moraines. These are formed when the glacier moves out, it spreads the debris to the edge. And as it melted, melts, it leaves a ridge along the edge, which is called the lateral moraine along the edge. And in the front of it, it's called an end moraine or a terminal moraine. That's typically what you see. And you find a lot of rocks that have been scratched. Rocks move in the bottom of the ice and, and they scratch the bedrock. But, but ice is kind of plastic. And so sometimes the rock will turn and then it'll be scratched in a different direction. On this rock, you can see there are scratches in probably looks like three directions. There's one that direction, there's one this way, and um, there might be another direction. Yeah, so, and as the rock, rocks are moving in the bottom of the ice, they'll scra scratch the bedrock. This is the bedrock uh, up at the Athabasca Glacier. So these are typical of the glaciated areas. So when we examine a lot of areas in, in the northern latitudes and, and even the mid-latitudes of, of continents, uh, we find these features. Like this is west of uh, Great Falls, Montana, where I lived for 27 years. This is a, a terminal moraine near Augusta, Montana, about 10 miles from the Rocky Mountain front, which was glaciated all up in there. And the, and the glacier came out about 10 miles out into the high plains. And I'm, I'm looking at it towards the southwest. And here's where the, it's, it, it doesn't exist because it probably broke through and it ponded water in there. And, they, and of course, they made a dam in that area. So this is a, a subdued terminal moraine. And when you look at the moraine, you find rocks of all sizes in a finer grain matrix, exactly what you see in currently glaciated areas or, or where the glaciers have receded. And you find scratched rocks like this and in two different directions, right in there, and there's, there's a direction going that way. And you go up into the, uh, the first cliff in uh, Sun River Canyon, uh, the Rocky Mountain front, you find the scratched bedrock going from west to east just exactly what you see in glaciated areas. And this is an area that gets up in the 80s for the summer temperatures, where you, uh, glaciers are so foreign to that area uh, right now. But, but not too long ago, they were glaciated, because look at these, they get a lot of precipitation here, and those, those stretches are still visible there, meaning that the ice age was not that long ago. And then you look at a lot of mountain areas in the west, and you find these these horseshoe lateral and terminal moraines that extend out from the mountains that were glaciated from a mountain valley out into a, a plain. This is the, North, the Wallawa Mountains. Uh, this is Wallawa Lake. And you'll see uh, uh, from up high, you see a lateral moraine there, a terminal moraine, and another lateral moraine. And beautiful Wallawa Lake that's over deep in like a fjord, which is another thing they do in valleys. They tend to, when they melt, the meltwater goes down and under pressure digs out the rock and over deepens. Uh, the, the, the valley. And when you look at uh, the, from the, from the uh, level of Wallawa Lake, look at the trees for scale. This lateral moraine is 600 feet high. So the glacier coming out of this valley up here was probably about 2,000 feet deep. And when you look at the material in the moraine, you know, you have rocks of all sizes, the granites has just come from the Wallawa Mountains, in a finer grain matrix around it. So that, the Wallawa Mountains were well glaciated. And then you find all these erratic boulders up in Canada and northern Montana. This is a famous set of erratic boulders. It means erratic means it doesn't outcrop in the area, but it was transported from afar away. This is uh, Okotoka erratics, uh, southwest of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's a line of erratics that extends from uh, Jasper, Alberta, down to the, the uh, border of northern Montana near Cutbank. And then here's another erratic boulder that is really a mystery. Uh, this is southwest of Portland, Oregon. But the ice, the furthest south of the ice in that area was Olympia, Washington. So what is this boulder 
doing out here in the Willamette Valley, southwest of Portland, Oregon. Well, there's a Lake Missoula flood uh, where you had a lake 2,000 feet deep that ba was backed up by a finger of the ice sheet in the valleys of western Montana. And it was 400, uh, 540 cubic miles, and it broke through the ice all in two days. It emptied out and spread through eastern Washington, just cut it up. It's called the Channel Scab Land, forming those coolies, Grand Coulee, in a matter of a few days. And it, it sent, uh, water was 1,000 feet deep going through the Columbia Gorge. I found erratic boulders up on the sides of the gorge, several hundred feet above the Columbia River. And then it spread uh, into the uh, Willamette Valley, 400 feet ab above Portland, Oregon. It went spread clear to Eugene, Oregon. And in that ice, you had a lot of rocks that, that the ice had picked up. And so it carried these as I and icebergs down to where you see it here. This is a special boulder. This is uh, as a shale, but it's been heated up a little to form argillite. It's a metamorphic shale, and it does not crop in the whole state of Oregon. And this is part of the belt supergroup that you find in western Montana and northern Idaho. So it's, that's exactly where it comes from. You know, if you had a Lake Missoula flood, you had an ice age. And when you add it all up, this is where the ice occurred. In the northern United States, a lot of this is, by the way, this is a schematic. There's a lot more mountains that were glaciated uh, in this area. Even the San Francisco Mountains in uh, Arizona were glaciated at the top. I don't know if you had any mountains glaciated here. Maybe you're... Okay, some of them were, okay. But you'll notice one thing. Look at that. That was not glaciated, never glaciated. That's the lowlands of Alaska were never glaciated. And that's where you find those woolly mammoths on the lowlands. They're not in ice. They're in permafrost with, that has ice wedges and ice lenses. But they're not in ice itself. And they lived in the lowlands during the Ice Age. And same with in Siberia. Here's the Scandinavian ice sheet right in here and, and its extension into Siberia. There's a little dis dispute about this area right in here. And now it's probably known that it, it covered the Barents Sea out north of Norway. But here, you know, the, the mountains of Central Asia and only the mountains of si Siberia were glaciated. Well, the lowlands weren't. But yet they, they're estimated there's millions of mammoth bones and a few less than 100 carcasses of mammoths found in this area. And they're in the lowlands. They lived there during the Ice Age a major mystery of uniformitarian earth science. So, can the mainstream scientists explain the Ice Age? They, the way they talk, you would think they can. Some say that, well, I'll cool it off maybe six degrees Fahrenheit and ice will start building up into Canada and move down to the northern United States. Well, I think you need a lot more than that. First of all, in the model I've developed, the ice doesn't start in northern Canada and move down. It forms more or less in place right where we generally see the, the, it, uh, or where it was several thousand years ago. But first of all, before we can know whether they can explain it, what are the conditions for an ice age? Even right here uh, in Albuquerque, what, what, what would we need? Cooler summers. Actually here, I think you need cooler winters too, but most areas where the ice has occurred, you don't need cooler winters. All re winters are already co uh, cool enough, like where I'm from. In fact, in Canada, you'd be better off having warmer winters, which you indeed did have. Also, much greater snowfall. And if you can find a climate change somehow through present processes of climate change, you can't just have one summer that's cooler. It's got to persist year after year after year for the ice and snow to build up. So those are the requirements for the, an ice age. Well, how much cooling? A guy used a computer model. Uh, in Canada, and he doubled the, the, the annual snowfall of Canada, and he wanted to find out if he cooled off summer temperatures by increments of 2 degrees centigrade, that's 3 degrees Fahrenheit, in his computer model, he wanted to find out where one inch of snow remained at, in, in mid or late September. You know, that's the end of the melting season. So that, that would be the start of a glaciation that would supposedly continue the next year.